needed to even set. There was a there was a blog uh, four or five days ago when you said that the first time the palace, the only and the first time the palace was destroyed was during the British invasion. I said no, you are wrong. Before the British invasion, the palace was destroyed twice. The first one was by Y the first. He set up the entire Benin, not just only the palace. He set the entire Benin in flames, protesting that he must be crowned the Oba. Thanks for clicking on this channel. Please subscribe to Afo's blog history and click on the notification button so that whenever we upload a new video you will be notified. Orobo elders of Oragu Kingdom visit Aliha of Benin as they trace their route to his palace. The Oragu elders of Delta State visit the Aliha of Benin saying their ancestors came from Aliha of Benin family. According to the history of Oragu Kingdom, the founding father of Oragu was Elfei, who migrated from the ancient Benin Kingdom and fought many battles before he got to their present location in Hubili North local government of Delta State. The elders explain how they left Benin for their present location in Delta State. It was Mr. Izadawa who took them to Aliha Palace. He seized the opportunity to explain some hidden history that many Benins are not aware of. He said the palace of the Oba of Benin had been burnt three times on different occasions in time because many people believe that the only time the palace of the Oba of Benin was burnt was during British invasion of Benin Kingdom. Please sit down and listen to the interaction between Oragu elders and Aliha of Benin as well as Mr. Azadawa explains some hidden facts about Benin history. Preceding the current dynasty of the Obas of Benin. The Olia has played one of those, one of the most remarkable um, roles in the foundation of the Benin people's history. And they have been, it has been there. His family has been there right from the very foundation of the first dynasty, which we refer to as the uh, official dynasty. They were there when the, the Gunumigodo people, as we were called at that time, took it upon themselves that there was a need to have a central government what eventually gave rise to the Sky Kings, the Ogeso. They were there. The, one of them emerged and became the first ruler of called uh, Igudu, Ogeso Igudu, which is the first ruler. The current king of Benin is the 71st. Although mindful, we have had almost 500 years of interregnum in between dynasty, the two dynasties. So they have been there for some time in memorial. And suffice to also state that during the reign of one of the Ogisos, the 23rd, Ogiso Riagba, an oath was taken between the Ogiso royal family and the noble families of originally these five elders. They are not originally, they are six, permanently six, and temporary sevens. Every conference must join them for a very short space of time 
until I sense the throne of his father as Yoba Rabinet. So as of today now, there are six. That, you know, they, they put up. So there are six. So, but originally it is believed that there were four, or originally five. And from the time of their creation, only has always been their head. So these ancient personalities were not created by even the Ogisos themselves. In short, Ogiso emerged from them. So they are not, in real sense, actually chiefs. They are elders of the land. They were there even before the turn of the Oba dynasty. So that is why in Benin history, we we'll say the first chieftaincy title created in Benin land is the Yasser of Benin. But they were there almost about 900 to 1,000 years before the ERC title was created. So that means that is why I wanted to give a brief background of why I refer to him as an Aegean and elder rather than Chief Olia. But most times people are not really very deep in the history tend to refer to them as chiefs. But however, they are not. They are Aegean of Benin Kingdom. They hold a special place in the history of this land. More special than the chiefs of the land. Alright? But that is not to say that they are equated to the Ogar of Benin. Alright? But they hold a very special place in the history of this land. And um, that is why I wish to introduce him as a John Olia of Benin Kingdom. And um, he has. Okay. So, uh, I want you. I have been one of the. I've been one of the greatest advocates for. If I was a governor of this land, I would. Uh, I would make them hold a special place, because being as, as an historian, I really know what um, the role that it played. I remember when. Um, Omonobane Dukwa Polobaiwari II, when he visited them uh, on a thank you visit to the palace of the Oni of Ife. He, I was there. He particularly had to single him out because it was his phobia that ensured at the time where there was interregnum in Benin, it was his own phobia that ensured only our Mawati. Yes. A woman. Yeah, a woman. A woman. Mm -hmm. He was the one who ensured the succession line uh, would be maintained at a time when that was the fifth Olia. Yeah. Okay, that was the fifth Olia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At a time where the Ogiamen people yes. wanted to usurp the throne because we had an interregnum of 70 years, wanted to usurp the throne of the land. And it was his own forebear that said no. We have a son that has become a ruler in Ilefe. He must come back to ascend the throne. Uh, fortunately, or fortunately, as the case may be, when we got there, or when they got there, they have found out that he was too old at that time to follow. So, and eventually, uh, he was also skeptical, understanding the circumstances that led him to flee. So he now gave, he said the only way he could trust enough, the Benin enough, led by him, by his phobia, was if they can pass the ultimate test. And that ultimate test, it is what has ensured that the dynasty, the line of the kings is preserved in Benin today. And that ultimate test, the burden of the ultimate test, was placed on his shoulders. He bought, his four years bought that ultimate test, passed successfully, and um, since that moment, they now had an appellation. Olia Nogele Moirudu or so. Olia Nogele Nogele Moirudu. Nogele Moirudu. It was corrupted to Ogele Moirudu. Okay. That is not a family greeting that yes. he really kept to his words of preserving those lives that was given to him alive. So that became the appellation of the family today. 
That's why every only has sons and daughters all over the world. Greeks, Laogi. Yes, Laogi. That is uh, the, the origin of uh, money salutation. Yeah. Uh, so that's how it came because his forebears bought that body and successful. And when he was able to pass, it was the same only that brought the young Oromi and successfully to them. And it is the same Olia and his Adrian, his fellow group, which we now refer to as the Uzamani Eon today, that also built the palace not far from here. Sama. At Usama here, mm -hmm. not far from here. Before the fifth over of Benin eventually now moved the palace to the current location it is at Ewedo. All right. And then it was also the fifth of our building. Seeing that they were too powerful, that started to create policies to reduce their power. Because of the powers that they wedded at uh, at the old, uh, obviously. So, and then uh, they hold a remarkable aspect of our history. And for me, having a very strong historical background, I usually say to myself that uh, for the rules that Olia has played in keeping the sacrosanctity of our history makes me want to even know more and affiliate. So that is why I'm very close to the current Olia building because I am I'm always in in ecstasy when I when I get to meet him, knowing fully where he shares the same bloodline with these very great men that has done exceedingly well. In the preservation of our rich cultural heritage, and I'm also I was very very happy when when you when you reached out to me, and I was more than willing to also help to establish if there are only our families um, uh, roots appendages of these great family scattered all over the world, we are very happy to have them come back so that we can expand. Seven years ago, sir, I started the crusade of identifying all the Benin descendants all over the world where they are located. And we have done a city in the world. I could list, uh, I could list tens of names of tribes that we have contacted, that they have reached out to us. Uh, predominantly uh, places like River States, Bayasa, Delta, Ondo, Ekiti. This is where you have predominantly been in across across the Niger, Anambra, and some parts in Enugu, and down to um, the Ga people of Accra, which we have constant interactions with. I think it's only this year we've not been there. Uh, for the past five years, we've been there three times, and it's always very welcoming. It's like a home away from home whenever we visit them. So. I'm very happy to have uh, you here. Uh, he's very happy to have you here. And uh, I'm sure that with constant conversation and constant interaction, we'll be able to now establish a very strong historical background that links all of us together as one people having the same headship, the same uh, organization. Now we, we separated. We, it's easy for us uh, for us to be called minorities. I've always established that point because we are divided across different tribal groups. One of the most in, one of the most intelligent thing that I would would need at that time was understanding that the people you call Yoruba today were different tribal groups that have different histories of origins. But he was able to unite them with the language which they called Yoruba today. As they now became known as one entity. Assuming if the Yorubas were divided into seven or eight tribes, I'm sure that probably they won't have been producing precedents and holding sway politically as the most uh, politically viable Southern Nigeria tribe. So, but today, but when we now look at the population of the Benins, now separated, whether as Urubu or as Isoko, uh, as a Gene, as a Query, as a Ekbeye, as Ogba, you now begin to wonder 
why we are very small as a people. So when I have an avenue for us to sit down and talk and begin to interact with the possibilities of uniting ourselves as, as a people, why still maintaining our modern day um, uh, tribal identity but recognizing our ancestry? It gives me a joy, and that's why I was very keen when you reached out to me and had to run to, to a John only to let me know that uh, these people are coming and they will now begin to look at the possibilities after today. It doesn't have to end yet on how we can continue now to interact constantly, and then uh, after which um, uh, invitations can also be sent to, uh, to a John Lear and uh, for, to come over and all that. We'll be very glad to also come so that. By the time we begin to interact constantly, in a couple of years from now, you see that we now begin to see ourselves as one. Uh, I've always preached that I'm looking forward to it and a do ancestral home of a lot of tribes where an Uruguma who has stayed here for 10 years, 15 years, can contest for local government chairman and will not be seen as a different man. I've always told people. That's my own That ah, where are you from? I'm a Benin Urugu in present day Delta. I am I am part and parcel. You are no more Benin than I am. I, I always give this example. If my father had given birth to four children, I, I, I stayed back and three probably had uh, relocated to London. And after 200 years, their children now came back. Then my children are now telling them that they are more Benin than them. <laughs> that is wrong. That is wrong idea. No Benin man is more Benin than the other. Whether we, we, we have to start having that okay. ideology. No Benin man can be more Benin man. There is no Benin man that ought to originally be more superior than the, the, the moment that you accept the fact and agree and convince based on the history your ancestors have passed down that this is where you are and you must come and take and take your place your rightful place as it is so and this is a step in the right direction so i'm very happy to have all of you here and uh, i'm sure that we we'll have more discussion here and we we'll have one or two things that we can take on them we cannot see how we can unite our history all right in my in my the beginning history is too large we will now begin to look at where your story ended. I will now begin to trace it backwards and connect it to the source. And from there, in a few years, we can have a cyclopedia of all the histories, the component of the history of Benin. That is how we're going to get the whole song, whole songness of Benin history. So I thank you. Uh, and, uh, and I also want to quickly say this. The proposal was drafted uh, September last year. I was submitted to His Royal Majesty, the Obarabini, current Obarabini last year, and he has approved the proposal. We're supposed to execute that proposal December last year, but we couldn't. So, but this year we had some um, issues, issues, a lot of issues came up. But I have been assured that by 2024, that uh, His Royal Majesty will definitely, we set a day or two days aside later on 2024 to invite all the Benin descendants all over the world for cultural assimilation, for conversation, for us to have a roundtable conversation. This is the Benin. This is not the Benin of 600 years ago. This is the Benin of the 21st century. Yeah. What can we do to strengthen ourselves as a people? All right, it was easy when the Robo man produced the, the deputy senior president. Yes. All right. From Morugu. Yes. Uh, okay, it's also from Morugu. Uh, it, would have been, okay. it would have been a lot easier if Omar Agege was contested for president and the whole component of Benin people are together as one. He will no longer be seen as a minority. Today, it is easier for them to say Hausa, Yoruba, and Igbo. Whereas, but when you look at the scope, of where the Benins are all scattered to. We have more population, yes. and more landmass, and more resources than the Hausa, Yoruba, and the Igbo. But because we've been disunited, the British indirect rule system, to ensure that we are completely disunited and not connect back 
to our room. But I thank God there have been this resurgence. People now realizing that we have been too divided all this while. There is a need for us to see ourselves as one while still maintaining where you are. You know, so when, uh, a year ago, two years ago, I went to see the Oba of Oba land. Uh, uh, they own the resources, the wealth of river states in Oba land, and the king there dresses like the Oba of the name. The Oba of Oba land is quite a very popular uh, king. He told, he told me, categorically, he told my group, Association of Great Benin Descent, and what he said was that, and sometimes we begin to blame ourselves while we left Benin. He said, but if we have not left Benin, would you have been able to be in a place where the resources oh, yeah. in that place determines what happens in Nigeria today? So it was it was the divine providence at that time of God and our ancestors that made them to live. But what we must not do as a people, we must not forget about what happened in the past and not look to reconnect with this 25, uh, 21st century and we can be able to build on that for the future generations to benefit from, whether politically, culturally, and economically. And so I thank all of you. God bless you. Uh, sir. Sorry, maybe within this period we might be um, trying to speak this way. Maybe with time, yeah. we'll try to learn the culture and at the same time try to adopt the system. So that we'll come here, we'll not look strange. Yeah. Um, I'm the uncle before, though I'm chief for uncle. Okay. Yeah, I know you. Yeah, we were discussing, I told you, you might be surprised when I'm asking, yeah. answering on car, where are we are Rogu. You know Rogu, we know that they, they are known as Rogu, but that has been because history. Of you know, marriage. Because of marriage, the marriage, the family, yes. you know, we are in boundary and all those stuff. So most of the time we answer both names and some of us keep some of those names. Why some of our... Uh, I think some generation also have started changing it to the role of the job. Um, the history is, uh, what you just said, actually I know I've also followed the page and I've seen a lot of all this. I've also watched it. And I've seen how wide and how uh, you're, uh, you're trying to, you're, your group are trying to pull everybody together, which is a good thing. And we do able to work in making of that and that uh, for us to also come to our roots. But it is it's good for you to know your roots, irrespective of where you are, so that you will also be boastful. Because some of us, um, we are not sleep. Like what um, you know, my head and I have said. And by the time you are in the place, you some ways are coming up. We we'll try to actually know who you are. And uh, uh, fortunately also, uh, we also happen to come for a great warrior kingdom. Because why I say so is, uh, based on the story, so, you know, our uh, progenitor, that is our forefather, who actually migrated from here down to where we are today, it was a great hunter. And it was the hunting process that are moving Based on the story, we are moving out from here to where we are today. And uh, also, another story we really got to where, where we are, also, that is the Uwe Lili as a rope. He saw his very beautiful uh, wife and he got married to an indigene, and that was how we expanded. And on that process, also, he still came back to me to pick up his father. So the question was, uh, what I keep asking myself. So for him to be his father means his mother is also from here. Yeah. It also means that what happened? Why did he only pick his father and leave his mother behind? So those are stories that we will later on. Uh, we will come. Well, we will keep to yes. So um, for us, I know we we'll still drop the history, but according to our culture, you know, there is a drink already on, on oh, the table. Okay. 
But for us, we heard what you said, which is uh, nice, trying to link all the stories together. And we also appreciate uh, at least for their part, based on stories that I've read. Like this, uh, what is it called? This uh, if a connection and I know I read it when Benedio commissioned uh, the library at uh, Saple Road at that time. Mm -hmm. Is it a portfolio? Saple Road. Saple Road. That was when I read the story. That is far back in uh, 19, I think, either 19 or 2000, early 2000. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, most uh, Lagos people always argue this. And they feel, because I'm a ruling voice, they feel I'm just telling lies until uh, they are over. That is over Akio. Akio, yeah. Now they will confession. And it was also them that also called me. Akio, this thing you've been saying is true. This is what I've told you. And Otto is the one of them is Otto, which is also from the royal. You know, they have this royal way of leadership, which is also from the royal family. They have called me and said, yeah, this thing you told us, we were thinking you are just me story. I said, no, I've read it. And when I came to the library, I don't know what attracted me to the book. Uh, I've forgotten the author. Uh, so and I read it. And there I find a new thing. And I keep preaching it, telling people this is how it is. And we will keep doing that as uh, things are uh, coming up. So we will keep doing that. Um, our coming here also, you know, if you see, we are just here like a representative. Yeah. Uh, we are not here in full. Yeah. You know, Robo is a very wide. We all know Robo. Yes, yeah, very well. You know, also we've also produced a deputy governor in the seventy by seventy nine. Yeah. Yeah. Was a who was the deputy yeah. governor to Ambassador. Yeah. Yeah, it's also from us too. So it's from also from Robo. And we've been producing some prominent people. Our brother too. He's our god brother too. We'll be producing people. But because of the name, people might be thinking we are from those We have a lot of them. We have a very great lot of them. Even by story also. The first Chief Justice, when we cut out from the West, is also from Morogu. Yes, and it also happened, we also left uh, Ben there. Yeah. The first Chief Justice also, is also from Morogu. Yeah. So we'll be having that. So I, I think yeah. it's the wisdom and the knowledge we also gain from this place. You know, uh, and we we'll would love to expand it and uh, move it uh, forward. So, I don't know, I think we have to do the drink yes, before yes, I yes. drop the message. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I don't know, sorry. I, 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 for your culture, I don't know if it is. You know, to confess <laughs> what you have just mentioned yeah. earlier, and you have you, introduced this to them. Yeah. Yeah. Yolisa of yeah. Ikorodu, yeah. uh, I said when they came in here in 1990, okay. they came to, they, they traced their roots home. And the delegation was led by uh, architect uh, Onofo Wakon. He was one of the foremost uh, architects in Nigeria. Yeah. And this is the very man. So this is my dad. These were the elders from Ikorodu then. Okay. Uh, they came to identify with us. Okay. 1990. Uh, 1990. 24th February 1990. Yes. 22nd to 24th. Yes. They came here. Mm. So, a lot of them too. They, 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 they have produced the, yes. the, the Chief Justice of Nigeria too. Okay. At the time. Mm. <coughs> then, uh, most of them. Uh, this man here is uh, a lawyer. He's a. Barrister Oyinye Koina for Rokon. Yeah. Uh, so they have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They trace their their root home. Uh, This is the architect. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. okay. Then this happens to be the tenth Ulisa of Ikorodu. Mm -hmm. mm. 
You see? <laughs> Yo, so, and because uh, the, the, the children were here recently and they brought this photograph. Oh, okay. Uh, Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, to break up. Okay, we No, no. Still yeah. In most cases, we use the one with the four loops. Okay. So it's going to play on Okay. Can you go up with you? Okay. 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 I didn't put it that, but for uh, another lady blessing. Uh, anything that you want to do, let me better come to you. Ashe. Make your children better. Ashe. And uh, the new year that you are going to enter through, you will be blessed. Amen. Sir. Anybody who said your own, it will not be better. We will not pray for that person. Sir. Sir. Government should uh, uh, remember you yes, to pay you yes, so that you might build plenty of this world. When we will come, we will enjoy. Yes, As we don't trace seniors, so we will be visiting here day in, day out. Yes, uh, uh, Benin will be greater than this one. Amen. We will be produced president. Yes, Senator, we yes, come in. As we are, they pray for you, so it will be with us. Amen. People that we, we love, we meet him. Yes. In good health. Like I come with motto. As we come with motto, we will go with motto. Simply. Simply. As I talk about the presence of my prayer. I'm back to pray. 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 So it is. Now you make us lead us to this place. May God bless you. Amen. The job that you are doing, government to promote you and add more money Amen. for your salary. Even as you as you get your soul, God should help you Amen. to together with your family. Amen. To be blessed. So it is. Amen. We we chop this corner not in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That's much more. Anyway, we turn. That's what I say. Turn, you blend it. Okay. So now, little by little, you learn that. Oh yes.
the supporter. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Six thousand naira. Now we tell the supporter. Five hundred for Kola first. Then this one and for Ola. Thank you. Uh, so chief and our elder here send us to share one. My brother, and the leko has one thousand naira. Now we tell the supporter. One the Onka has more than one thousand naira. Thank you. I want to run the food. 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 I get one thousand. I want to take the support of you. Thank 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 you. Because there is a connotation to it. Yes. Uh, so, for example, if our visitor comes, mm -hmm. it's not good. Maybe he will just come and be stranded. Mm -hmm. So it is good for him to mm -hmm. hold it. So we will also go. Mm -hmm. It's not good we leave our visitor because they will actually entertain us. Mm -hmm. They will feed us. So it's not good also. And we have something. We are going back, and we also leave them stranded. Mm -hmm. That is why. That is actually the commission of. Uh, uh, anyway, you know, these are native cola. No? Yes, yeah, it doesn't yeah. understand any other language yeah. apart from there. Any language, any language, any language, call it the other side. So, um, the prayer in the language. No problem. Who led the delegation? The name? Jacob. Jacob. The other name is the name of Oba. Oba? Yes. え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、
When they came, they saw as cocktails and they took them away because they felt you don't have value for it. So, my brother, I want to thank you very much. Thank you, sir. And our elders that also level of things that they are supposed to do, you know, to receive us at the break and call of Algeria, uh, people were here and you gave us a warm uh, uh, welcome uh, reception. I want to say once again on behalf of my honorable uh, chief. Understanding of that uh, uh, generation at that time also. Okay, so the Yorubu itself, the uh, story had it that we are the children of Ife. If we got married to Oriria, Oriria is the last daughter of Owa. Is the last daughter of the oh. And uh, his elder uh, brothers are the Ugeni, Ugo, Ugo, and Ugo, no, for their own mother's side. Okay. Yes, the Ugeni, the Agbara, and Agbara, or something like that. Ugo, okay. Oriria uh, is the last, and she is the only girl. And they said, uh, the story also has it that uh, he hunted, he was hunting along the river in there, that from the near down to uh, not the present day Ugeli. I think they, there's a place they settled first, even Ugeli family were also there, which is uh, whether uh, whether uh, Iberia or something like that, very close to each other, those domestic area. So, and from there, you know. The family started expanding. He fell in love with Aurelia, which is the uh, sister. And he had it, the son. And the son they have is today called Aurelia. Yes. So that is the one of today. Yes. And then at the time, like we were just in, you know, my elder, uh, elder brother has talked about. Uh, we're going to our ball to do some other things. The Aurelia herself, which is the female, happened to be close to his 
father, which yeah, that is her father, which is the Owa. So she also possesses some potent power. You know, those days is this locally. Yes. yes. So combined with a uh, power also. So they were like a warrior like. So they can go to any community, help them to conquer and come back uh, to any other. That was actually what happened. They went to a ball and they were having issues with their fellow community. And they were also, you know, that period also they were having this uh, it's like a kidnapping. Somebody would just come back all of them as a slave and all those Morogu, Efe, um, Aurelia, which is the wife of Efe, uh, Efe and their father, which is the short form is uh, Oriete. He has a longer name, just like what I said, you know, as the story is going, they look for Mr. Lord. But I know the first time I heard it was like the beginning, honestly. So the Oriete itself is actually the person that based on the story also, he said it's from Moria family. Oh, really? Yes. Yes. Okay. That's the beginning. Yes. So it's the one that they said is from Moria family. Why the son is the infant itself. And you know, as he was progressing, he decided to come and pick his father. And they left together. I think the father died in a boss or something like that. Okay, uh, so that was how the whole thing now happened. Before they now, you know, they now have conflict with the boss so because of the expansion of the uh, family. Uh, we now came to our present location. Like we will now say, after all, my mother, family, they have large of lands. Nobody is occupying them. Why should I be suffering here? That is our present day home. And you know, Rogu, Shepard, both Kuala, the Rogos, going up to Ethiopia River. Yes. We have all those battles expanded because of their fight and all those And we'll be living like that. And our type of rulership is also like, almost like the resort, where the eldest is the person we know as our king. Mm. And it's, that is the story today. Yes. Eldest is always the person and based on other stories I've heard, simply not so beginning, those that migrated, some of them also are still having that type of rulership wherever they are. Yes. Yes. So, yes. so that culture is what we are keeping. But you know, things always happen. In the situation where you go, okay, we want to establish this, they say you are a mother child, like what we also say, in the region. Now you people are, are my sister children. And some rights you know, were being denied us. So that is what is actually popping some of us and our kingdom to say, you know, this is our father, he came from somewhere. We keep hearing this from the name, the name, the name. We actually you now made us to do further research. We now had the story that is from only our family. Actually, that is what they said. So all along we've been trying to contact Uri Afa. You know, you cannot just run into somewhere yes. and just say who we are from here. And thank God that was when we were still planning, thinking, cracking our heads. Then Master now come and now came into that space. Okay. And today that is where we are here. Thank you very much. So that is our first mm. story. Let me just keep it like that. Yes. The short story is yes. I think so, uh, when the elders come around, <laughs> I think they will further portray <laughs> of, of mm -hmm. uh, all this. And yes. the story also had it that within the period they left here it was around 14th century. Yeah, and that 14th century was the time where the first was around. During the first, uh, the first uh, there were a lot of uh, mass. Mass migration. Migration as mm. a result of wars and the rest. Yes. Yeah. So a lot of people really ran away to settle in so many areas uh, until maybe the SCB came in, in the 15th century, etc. Uh, things were not getting a little bit uh, balanced. So uh, there are 
out of it. So that is how the, the story actually works. Yes, there's, there's, sorry. Okay, go ahead. No, you can. There's an history yeah. that is not uh, very popular that um, we can start to establish some distance. Yes. Uh, okay, thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, it's not really popular. Like it's not. You don't see it in most books, opinion yes. books. Yes. But I want to convey some secret. No, <clears throat> Ewa's father. I'm even sure that the John Lee is not aware of the story. But I want to tell you something. It was my half human kind. Ewa's father was about him. He had four sons. Ebeka, Urubiru, Ogun, Wife Yoku. These were the four princes he had. They all became all bars of him. These four sons. Some certain things happened. Uh, a palace intrigues happened that led to the killing of a regicide was committed, the royal mother of Obaohe. Now, Ogun, who was a warrior, sworn that he was going to take revenge for his father's death. So his two elder brothers became the Oba. They died and he got to his throne. But because the people who planned, who orchestrated that act against his father, against his father, about him, the the Usamas, the John, they were his direct targets. His direct target, yes, the Usamas. So when he became the upper, I'm sure that a lot of the children of these elders fled. Okay. Yes. So, because his idea that he had was that he was going to wipe out their lineage, the entire lineage, and replace them with another set of elders. It's not a popular history. But when you were, when you were saying it, I remember that there is an history, an authentic history that talked about the revenge, or well, that's why he was denied the throne. His younger brother yeah. now became an Oba before him. Mm -hmm. He needed to even set. There was a there was a blog uh, four or five days ago when he said that the first time the palace, the only and the first time the palace was destroyed was during the British invasion. I said no, you are wrong. Before the British invasion, the palace was destroyed twice. Right. The first one was by Y. The first, he set up the entire Benin, not just only the palace. He set the entire Benin in flames, protesting that he must be crowned the Oba. The second time was about but it was a usurper. Uh -huh. When he now discovered that there is no way he can survive. His, his elder brother, who is the rightful owner, so he set himself and the palace on fire. That was the second time. The tenth time was under the British invasion. So why am I saying this? It is very... The man who left Benin, Rete, most likely left understanding... Rete was a woman. No, no, a man. A man. He's the father of Fifi. Okay. Okay. So knew that, or probably his own father had to ask his own son to, do, to leave. At that time, knew fully whether Ewai was coming. Obviously, in Benin, Ewai had your basset. He was a no nonsense king. He's the greatest king of Benin. So they knew that when he eventually ascended the throne, nobody would survive his own slot. So, and now begin to start linking. Like I said, yeah. when you told me on, on phone, that when we now start to talk, we now begin to put the puzzles together. 
will now begin to see like i said by the time you people come again you will unveil all the things that you have then we'll unveil what we have here and you'll now see a meeting point and the time the possibly time that he left and the reason that he most likely left and these are some of the things I needed to just chip in when you were yeah. when we were already connecting me to by a wife. Yeah, thank even, you. Even with this connection, <laughs> I'm also getting because uh, it's it's actually uh, the puzzle is right. Because when you say somebody left, mm -hmm. yeah. then after seeing a settling place, came back and mm -hmm. his father, mm -hmm. moving to remove him and take him along. So you see, there's there's always a time. Connection. So actually, we. Definitely, we'll still give you guys time also, maybe to see more connection. When you people are ready, you can now uh, call on us. Then, yes, so we are coming up with our oh, yes. We might also put more facts and more explanations yes. in and discussion. Mm -hmm. I think from there, we'll start kicking off and start bringing those facts together and start binding them together also for our future generations. <laughs> if you go, come back on another day. That will be two times. So. <laughs> and they make a uh, road, not a, you know, block. Oh. Yeah, yes. yeah, but once you just come, once you don't come again, yeah, yeah. not block. Oh. <laughs> 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 now, now I meet high. Yes, now they find the high. Yes. So, uh, why we work out this work out? So, my elder here and chief. The same way could go, we will come back and another time with Shelba. Very much, my dear. For oh, yeah. I pray that your journey will be so successful. Yes. Yes. Oh, man. yes. We, we, we have accident-free yeah. journey. Yeah, man. So, we are expecting you people soon. Yes. Oh, we, still yeah. uh, we still put hairs together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, that uh, yeah. these things can be unraveled. Oh, yes. So when you are like the little one now, you are able to get something complete. Oh, oh yes. You can now say mm -hmm. maybe we we'll just give a more tinter of you. I also need to go and inform. Oh yes. Yeah. Uh, inform the yeah. our yeah. elders yeah. and make them to be ready also. So yeah. whoever is coming, we will also come along with them. Okay. So that we will not have a proper sit down and yes. proper discussion. Yeah. Maybe it might be longer than this. And so maybe that time we will start to prepare our lunch. By <laughs> 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 the grace of God. Thank you for Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.